Hello, Internet. Today I'm doing a video and a series of reviews, actually two videos, for Louisiana and for New Orleans. Um, so here's the deal. My friend Gleam on the Aficionados Discord server sent around a number of samples of Louisiana-based rums in an effort to raise awareness and to get us all to pitch in uh, for recovery efforts after Hurricane Ida. Um, and uh, I thought I would, so I did that myself, but I thought I would, I would make these videos to kind of spread the word a little bit. So here's the thing. If you've been watching this channel for a little while, you may have noticed that I don't ask folks to do a whole lot of things. I never say to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. I never say to hit like or comment or any of that stuff because I figure you're, y'all as adults, um, you can, you can, you can, you're intelligent. You can make decisions on your own. Um, I do not, maybe one day when I'm, when I'm finally fired from my day job, I will, I will get desperate and put up, put up a Patreon page and monetize my ads and all that, that stuff. But not yet. I don't, I don't really ask you to do those things because I mean, again, I, I assume you're, you're, you're intelligent human beings, but in this case, in this case, I will ask you to do something. Um, if you enjoy this channel, please consider donating uh, to the, uh, the IDA and uh, recovery efforts. Um, in particular, I'm going to link down below to a donation page for the Mutual Aid Re Response Network, which I donated to. So, you know, give, give, a few, give a few bucks to the folks trying to, trying to put their lives back together down there. Um, I think it would really help out. And in the meantime, uh, I'm going to entertain you all and hopefully uh, educate you all by, pa by tasting through a whole series of rums from Louisiana. I had to, sp the, the, the entire set is nine rums. So I'm splitting that up into two because I'm not going to be able to do a flight of nine different spears at once. So we're doing five and four. I, um, I chose the order through random number generator. I did, some distilleries had two entries. So I, you know, exercised my, uh, you know, rule bending to put those together so I could sort of, um, you know, compare and contrast the distillery's own, uh, own out output against, you know, itself. But otherwise, all, all the ordering is just by, you know, me going to a Google random number generator and hitting it a couple times. Um, now, Louisiana rum, I've never had it before. But at least on paper, this is the area of U.S. rum distilling that I am most excited about. Let me, put it, let me say that again. Louisiana is the area of rum production in the U.S. that I have, I am most excited about where I see the most potential. New England, Boston in particular, the, the uh, Massachusetts area, has the longest history of rum distilling. But, I mean, that was back in the colonial days, right? That was back when... There was a large inflow of fresh molasses from the slave islands, right? The British slave islands. And that's not really the case anymore. Um, doesn't mean they can't make rum up there, but it means they're not getting the raw materials as, you know, as, as easily as, as they once did. By contrast, Louisiana is one of the few states left in, in, the, in the Union that still grows a heck of a lot of sugarcane. Um, they also produce um, steens. Cane syrup, which uh, is one of my favorite products in the world. This has pretty much replaced all other sweeteners in our, in our household. We were eating uh, pancakes with this stuff on top um, this morning, actually, with my, my, um, my daughter and my wife and I. Um, so they grow a heck of a lot of cane in Louisiana. And uh, as a result, you get a heck of a lot of molasses and just excess cane that you can use also to make um, cane juice and cane syrup based rums. So there's a lot of rum production down there. Uh, it doesn't seem to make its way to up to Chicago, but this is my opportunity to try it and just do a, a long, deep dive into, into um, what Louisiana rums can do. So we're just going to, random, or, random order basically, we're just going to try these things out and I will report on them uh, as we get to them. So let's do a pour. Uh, I think the three of these are molasses based and two of these are cane juice based. All right. And weirdly enough, uh, 
the uh, the the bottles bottle that we get strength ended up in the, at the end of the tasting. And so what I'm going to do is basically go through these um, one time, neat, give them a squirt of water, get them get them down to proof with with the you know the 40 percent. That's not going to take much. If they get a drop. That's going to get a drop or two. But you know the, some of these are considerably stronger than that, so they're going to get a couple more squirts. Anyways, let's. Uh, oh, the aromas are already lovely. Get, let's get started. Um, so the first rum is the Rulesson Distilling Company from New Orleans. A uh, rum overproof. Uh, this is pot distilled, which is uh, which is very interesting and very promising, and it is bottled uh, at fifty seven percent. Alcohol by volume, which, but for the record, is not overproof. That is proof. Um, this is batch one, incidentally. So that's this. That's promising. I mean, I mean, pot distillation should add a little something, something to this. But let's see what we got. So it should be molasses based. Um, all right, here we go on the nose. Um, good clean cane distillate is my first note. Um, so there's some some orange blossoms coming on. There's there's some floral notes first off, on top of some just kind of general yeah I mean this stuff cane syrup. Um, and then then underneath there's some some citrus notes. There's some grapefruit going on, which is interesting because again this is this should be molasses based right? Unless unless I got that totally wrong. Wait, what did they, did they say that? Uh, sorry, sugar making process. Uh, one hundred percent Louisiana molasses. I do not think this is blackstrap, but I could be wrong on that. Yeah, definitely getting more grapefruity, but the the sort of citrus blossom, the orange blossom, is still there. Cane syrup. A little bit of some vegetal notes in there, which I like very much. Um, some olives, green olives. Um, a little bit of a of a kind of a, an asparagus note. Um, some sweet Virginia tobacco. Um, I mean, it's it's funny. Even though this is molasses based, it's actually reminding me. My first point of reference would be Martinique. Um, it's got this this sort of very subtle minerality, this ashiness to it, um, almost like eau de vie of ashes, that kind of thing. There's a little uh, perique in here, which I like, and it's appropriate for the for the territory, right? And maybe like half a, a, a cherry tomato. There's a little bit of a tomato note in here, kind of mingled in with the grapefruit. It's a lovely nose. It's it really is. Um, I've been considering whether whether or not I should be rating these um, because I, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm doing a video for Louisiana and, and I'm trashing their rums. But you know, if they're all this good, I, I I'm pretty sure I'll I'll just go ahead and rate them. I mean, it may, on the palate, this may fall apart, but I'm guessing it won't. All right, let's see what we got on the palate. That is not falling apart at all. Oh, that's that's excellent. Um, so again, it's got that, that subtle ashiness, that subtle kind of, yeah, let's go eau de vie of ashes and minerality kind of character. It's got it's got a little bit of a Northern Rhone Viognier kind of feel to it. Um, but with grapefruit peel, grapefruit pith, a little a little um, bergamot in there, a little spritz of lemon too. But arrives actually quite sweet. Um, so this is doing this is a very nice development in the mouth. Arrives sweet on a kind of Steen's note, but Steen's like mixed with flowers, mixed again with, um, yeah, orange blossoms, but also just just field flowers, things like that. Little, little uh, dried grass in there. So, cane syrup in like, you know, flowers and grass, uh, that kind of thing. That's how it arrives. 
Some white pepper on the palate too. And it comes, and then it dries out. Um, it does, it is a little bit uh, uh, shallow in the mouth. And I sometimes talk about this. Um, it kind of stops about halfway through my mouth, right as it hits my molars. It just kind of fades away. But while it's there, this little part where it's where it's uh, right in front, I mean, it's lovely. It's um, there's a little bit of seawater there, a little fennel. Um, uh, the tomato is not very, very obvious on the palate. No, wait, maybe, maybe. Give this one more shot. Why not? Yeah, there's a little bit of like a, uh, you know, when you're doing shish kebab and you like, there's like the, the grilled, the little grilled piece of like toasted burned tomato on there, maybe. That's kind of what I, there's a little bit of like burned tomato on the palate, which I like. Uh, some, yeah, the fennel thing, a little seawater, a little, uh, um, um, a little olive too. And what, I, what I'm getting is a kind of just classic rum note. What I, I'm getting a, a expression of terroir, really. This this comes across as like a cross between, um, oh, I don't know, take take Mark, Martinique, but just, you know, round it out, soften it up a little bit. Uh, um, and maybe throw in, you know, a little bit more of a, of that sort of, you know, olivey character, that, that floral character, which I don't get as much on Martinetian rums. That's not something more I, I, I expect from low ester molasses based rums. So that, that kind of, you know, uh, midpoint. This feels, I, I'm tasting the soil a little bit, which I, I absolutely adore. So I should say the reason why I'm, I'm, I consider, uh, didn't I stop my lecture at that, at this point? The reason why I'm excited about Louisiana rums is because they're making molasses right there. Um, they're making, you know, they're growing cane right there. Um, it's not like they don't have to like load it on a truck or put it on an airplane and, and ship it or, you know, buy tons of sugar and just try to make something for the tasting room. They're growing the stuff right there and they're making it based on the stuff that's being, you know, made right there. And that's just a, a, a recipe for, for good distilling. Um, when you're using the products that are just kind of available in around your community rather than trying to start from, you know, this thing you want to make and then uh, building the products from, you know, the international shipping scene, I suppose. Um, great spirits start from stuff you have too much of. Um, very nice. Um, Oh, there's a little bit of a lime thing going, like a can lime candy thing coming through now. All right, I'm going to give this a couple squirts of water and we'll come back to it. Three, four, let's see if that's enough. All right, four and a half squirts should be enough. Let's move on to rum number, number two. Actually, and number three at the same time. Sugarfield. This is experimental series batch number five. Ascension Parish Cane Juice, uh, bottled at 46%. So this is, um, uh, these are both actually uh, cane juice based rums. Um, they're just made in, in different parishes, so slightly different terroir. Uh, so what do we got? Um, hand crushed at the distillery. Uh, uh, fermented with Lalamand Aramis. So they're giving us some useful information. And double distilled in our pot still in November and December 2020 on this one. All right, so let's, uh, I'm going get to the, get these all mixed up. Let's move that to the center. All right, on the nose of this, uh, this first sugar field, the uh, number five experimental. There we go. Okay. This is, okay, so shows a similar terroir to the uh, the Roulet Son, but much more kind of aggressive in, in my face um, and sharp. So it's it has a fruitiness, but this is more of a, of a tart green fruitiness. Um, 
so I'm getting um, Mayer lemon peel. It's like kind of a uh, sweet lemon, but also citron. Some lime juice, olive. Uh, and then there's like this this sort of like a red mud thing. Like a it just smells like like uh, like volcanic mud, um, something like that. Black olives this time. Oh, okay, there's some there's some green olives too. Um, also a tomato note, but kind of heading in a diff different direction. This is more like a, a unripe tomato, like a green, like you picked a tomato off off a tree when it was still green. You kind of tried to bite into it. That kind of thing. Also has that has the same kind of subtle smokiness, but again, this is this is much much more in my face, much more aggressive and biting. I, this is what I, I at least on the nose I would be tempted to have with some food. Um, so I'm wondering now, is this like going to be a tur turn out to be a food spirit? Is this like a America's answer to Baijo? But we'll see. I've never tried this before. Here, here we go. Also very good. Okay, these these rums are showing up. I'm 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 very happy so far. I was one. I was worried when I started this. Am, am I even going to get two or three of these that I like? I have a feeling I'm going to like a lot of these. Um, if this is if these first two are sort of any indication of what these producers are bringing. Um, I'm sorry. I'm I'm babbling. So right on on the front, I, I'm getting I can't, again that same sweet note, but it's it's more of a cotton candy kind of note this time, um, mingled with. There's still that floral character, but there's more, more of a, almost a Brussels sprout thing going on, like a... Mm. Yeah, quite sweet up front, cotton candy, a little bubble gum, um, but mingled around with, okay, some field flowers, a little grassiness again. But yeah, there's, there's much more of a kind of... Uh, um, burn sauteed kind of overcooked uh, brussels sprouts note on the front end and that kind of again turns into a nice peppery ashy character with some olives a little absinthe in there on the back end um again quite mineral uh Again, you you hand this to me, and I'm I'm thinking. You hand this to me blind, I mean, and I'm I'm thinking, okay, this this feels like someone blended, uh, I don't know, some uh, something you know a naissance with a little bit of maybe like some worthy park or something, um, that that uh, uh, low ester worthy park like uh, or even like low ester Hamden or something. Extremely well made. This is actually pushing back further in my mouth um, than the uh, the the Rulaison. Um It's much softer on the palate than I, I was expecting on the nose. There isn't the same acidity there. There is a little bit of a uh, of a lemon peel aspect to it to it as well. I'm, I'm impressed, but we have to see what. Uh, gonna give that a squirt of water. Come back to it. What it's. Um, what a sibling can do. So this is uh, on our, our third rum is Sugarfield Experimental Series, batch number six, uh, from Assumption Parish. Not a, not Ascension. This is Assumption Parish. Forty six percent, same yeast, um, same preparation, basically same time period of, of distilling, November and December twenty twenty. Um, all right. So these are. What they're emphasizing here is terroir, is location, and I like that. That makes me extremely happy because I'm as much a wine nerd as I am a rum nerd. And um, and uh, oh, okay, this is um, <laughs> this is very wow. I was worried that I would be reviewing the same rum twice, but that is not going to be the case. This is a, a very different nose on um, uh, corn candy 
Uh, I really like like the the, the candy pumpkins. Um, first off, with some like bamboo. Um, wow, this is wild. I really like this this nose. Um, some ginger ale in there as well. No, 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 no. This um uh uh what is? I think it's filberts. Is the uh, uh the there's like a, a soda that's a cross between a ginger ale and like a cream soda. This kind of smells like filberts. But then you have those. You have that little uh, hint of black olive. The the licorice, salted licorice. Let's remind you. Hey, I'm a rum. A little strawberry going on. It smells significantly less ashy. There's less ash. There's le less pepper on this nose than than the previous two. This is this is fascinating. There's a little cucumber in there. So really, it's it's we're vatting together filberts with or not not, not Phil, filberts is a soda company in Chicago. Um, what am I what am I thinking? I will I will if I remember while I'm watching this I will put it down below. But there's a there's a distinctive um, Midwest soda that is um, basically a blend of of ginger ale and cream soda. What I'm getting right now is is um, Mr. Cucumber, which is a cucumber-based soda that I really enjoy, actually. That's wild. It's it's much less again. It's much less in your face than number two. It's even less less in your face than number one. But the the flavors it's throwing at me are, are really quite quite extraordinary. There's a little bit of a Smarties thing going on. So very candied, but doesn't smell fake somehow. Um, okay, on the palate. Oh. Wow. Holy crap. Um won't be a minute. Let me let me let me see if I can process this. Red fruit. Strawberry. Red currant. Um, but then there's the, the, the ash that wasn't there on the nose it kind of comes through, uh, on the finish in particular. Um, so it's, it's, you're getting at the front end, yeah, kind of mingling of red fruit, a little bit of black olive, a little licorice, and then it's kind of, um, enveloped in this beautiful, ashy, muddy, that red, that red mud thing I mentioned, all that is all over my mouth. Um, this is epic. Um, I reviewed uh, uh, a Lonton from Savannah Distillery. This is kind of gesturing in that direction, but it's not as weird. And it feels, I think I actually like this better. Um, Jesus. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back on track. Um, little sweet potato, so a little bit of a root vegetation thing. A um, little pickle, little cucumber again, ginger. Um, flavors I'm not really uh, uh, I don't usually expect to see in rum, but they're showing up here and they're showing up hard. This is I'm I am thank you Gleam. Thank you for, for introducing me to this world. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to move on because I have to. I can, I feel like I'm if I don't move on right now, like I'm just going to spend the rest of this video trying to investigate this uh, what is what even is this? Assumption Parish rum from Sugarfield. I'm not even don't even wait for my rating. Don't even wait to, for these are all reasonably priced. Go but this is the first this is one you should buy. This is a this is a buy it now. If you see it, um, I think it's a squirt of water. Unless it totally collapses with water, and I don't think it will. Wow. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> that's a hard act to follow. So, in the, the death seat is oh no, it's it's black pearl from uh, seven three distilling. 
Um, this is uh, molasses based. We're back to molasses based. They don't say a whole lot of, uh, on their website, as I recall. But this is bottled at 42.5%. Um, and uh, let's get going. All right. 7.3 uh, Black Pearl Rum on the nose. Whoa, okay. Smells much sweeter than the than the previous th three. I mean, it's it, and a total contrast to, um, I mean, well, yeah, all three, but especially the last one. We're getting those sort of, you know, the candy necklace, necklace things. We're, get, we're definitely getting that. Uh, some Seven Up in there. A little whipped cream. I would I would not be surprised if this is distilled to a much higher strength than the previous three, but it's not a bad nose at all. There is a little bit of a tomato thing coming through, so just add a splash of like pizza sauce into your with your uh, Seven Up and your your um, necklace candy. Um, some some uh, some minerality, some kind of wet rocks. Little hints of like, uh, oh, what is that? Um, or oriental tobacco smoke, maybe. Smells light. Smells um, smells ref refreshing. Smells uh, lovely. I would, I'm, I w if someone handed me to this in a daiquiri, I would probably enjoy it. But let's see how it is in the palate. Definitely suffers in, in comparison to the previous three, but not really not bad at all. Um, uh, I'm guessing this was, you know, I don't think this was fully column distilled. I'm guessing that's not the setup they have. But what I'm guessing, what I'm getting from this is, you know, a, a fairly refined distillate, something that what came off the still at high ABV. So probably ran through, um, probably some kind of hybrid still that ran through, um, uh, the column pretty aggressively. Um, whipped cream. Um, it still has that, that smoky minerality thing, which I'm beginning to think is, is just distinctive of Louisiana rum after having four of these things so far. Um, kind of ashy. has this... Um, Kind of like a watermelon eau de vie sort of thing. There's a little bit of a watermelon note, but it's very, you know, refined and spirity. Doesn't hang along for very, doesn't hang around very long in the mouth. And I don't think that's all down to the strength. I think that's, it's, it's just the nature of the spirit. Definitely shopping, stopping way short of, short of my mouth, even shorter than the, um, uh, the roulet son. Um, uh, and the, the finish is most, it's nice and dry. There's no sugar in this that I can detect anyways, but it, you know, it arrives kind of a nice sweet whipped cream kind of way and ends in a nice, you know, vague, um, ashy, peppery, uh, rocky kind of way. Give it one more shot. Yeah, I like this. Good, honest rum. That's all we got here. Um, a little bit of, of like burned grass as well. Yeah, let's go with the burned grass note. Um, I would be very happy with this. I don't think it's it's not doesn't feel like it was built to shoot you know shoot the moon. Um, this is not aiming all that high, but it's a, it's a very good uh, honest rum, and I like it. So let's move on. Now this last rum in the in the in the sorry in the lineup got a little had a little bit of a spilly accident, so most of the the nice labels great work on the labels by the way gleam, um, kind of got uh, erased by the force of the alcohol. But this is the Happy Raptor five oh four silver rum bottled by bottled uh, at forty percent. Oh wait, I didn't get the squirt. Uh, we have like a little tiny score to the black pearl and we'll come back to it um so this i think is also molasses based 
Um, not a whole lot of information on, on this one either. But let's see what it's got. 40% alcohol. Whoa, okay. That's actually got quite a nose for something um, that's been, you know, proofed down so much. So I'm getting some, some definite tomato sauce notes, a little San Marzano in there. Um, I mean, this smells like food is kind of what I'm getting. It smells like kind of like V8 juice and um, some olives, tomatoes, pizza, a little bit of um, uh, that same kind of ashy peppery character. So, I mean, I was ready, you know, when I, when I saw that this one was 40%, I was ready to kind of write it off a little bit. But on the nose, this little, this little guy is, um, is showing me a few things. Um, a little bit of fennel on the nose as well. And like half a stick of bubble gum. Nice. I, I, I am enjoying this nose very much. What I'm worried about is the palate, really. Okay. Ooh. That's pretty gracious. I mean, for, for something that... I mean, is this actually 40%? Did I meant... Uh, I mean, it doesn't feel thin. Let me put it that way. This does not feel like it's been throttled to within an inch of its like life, like some you know Scotch malts that I've had or some rums that I've had. This feels very much alive and well at the proof it's at, um, which is and it's quite good actually. Okay, again, very food-like. I'm getting, I'm going to get, again, tomato, a little bit of grapefruit, a little, little bit of lime, lime juice, uh, olives, some, um, almost like a yellow pepper note, yellow bell pepper. Um, and then on, on the finish, the finish is a little bit clipped, and I think that's where the, the strength is kind of, is kind of showing up. The, the mouthfeel doesn't feel thin or anything. It's just the finish kind of stops short. I mean, let me stop. It isn't even that short. It just feels shorter than it should be given the flavors that it's throwing at me. Um, uh, black licorice, again, really just like a pastis kind of note. Um, yeah, this is, this, this is pretty good. I, I, like, I like this lineup a lot. Um, this is one of the, the best sort of no notes lineups I've done in a long, long time. And um, color me impressed. Well done, Louisiana. Um, it's also the same territory. All right. I'm going to give this like two drops of water. See what that does. All right. Let's go through these again. Now they've all been proofed down. All right, starting again with the Relaison, batch number one. It doesn't develop a whole lot um, with water. There's a little bit more muddiness, a little bit more sweetness coming through. Uh, there's a kind of flower eau de vie kind of thing happening here which I like very much, but it still has that, um, that muddy character, the, and the, the, the slight citrusy character. I like this very much. Um, this is, this, these are all solid. Um, and this one is solid. Oh, that, that is what adding water did. It improves the mouthfeel. And the finish, especially, immensely. I was complaining about the finish on this a little bit when I was tasting it neat. 
with water and it just covers my entire mouth. It's, it's much more creamy. Now, um, the ash comes out, the, the, the ground black pepper comes out, but at the same time, there's a kind of, um, uh, almost a, well, cane syrup, but, but also like a honeyed, um, and a bubble gummy, almost sweetness to this. But also very citricky, very grapefruity, very kind of green. I'm still getting that sort of asparagusy note on this. Um, okay, water actually bumps this up a notch for me. Um, I'm impressed. This is oh, what do I give this score wise? I'm gonna give this like an eighty. It's mid eighties. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to, I'm, I'm waffling between 85 and 86, which is, so I'm going to give this an 85 plus. I may change that um, as I go through the rest of the lineup, but for now, tentative 85 plus. All right, second one. We're, uh, we're doing the, uh, the Sugarfield Experimental Series Ascension Parish. No, this is batch five. This was the one that was more aggressive on the nose before. Okay, the nose has actually receded a little bit on this one. Now that I've added water, it's much, it's it's more quiet. Um, I really hope I, I I didn't kill this. I don't think I did. I only added like a squirt, and this is forty six percent. So, yeah, I'm getting a little a little grapefruitiness, that kind of green um, tomato aspect. Just some nice general cane juicy notes. In, uh, overall and slightly more grassy but it's like a sweet grassy and it's oh, actually no it's 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 uh it's grassy but it's also like a um a kind of fresh virginia tobacco note so it's the really you know kind of green citrusy style of, of like Car carolina tobacco carolina bright bright leaf on the palate Oh, really good on the palate. Um, there's a kind of pool water note, but nice. They're like a drink chlorinated water, again, but nice thing. Lots of licorice. The licorice just comes right up front, and it's like, hello. Um, mix of salted licorice and also like black Twizzlers. White pepper. Cane juice, obviously. Um, I'm still going to go with that, that, uh, a Carolina bright leaf tobacco thing. That's definitely happening. Uh, and also kind of like smoky, per smoked paprika note. Also the, the ash notes and, and the, the muddy notes that I was mentioning earlier, they're still there. Nice. Good rum. I don't like it quite as much. As I like the, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bump the, uh, the Roulesson up to 86 because it deserves it. And I, I'm going to keep this at 85. So 86 for the, for the Roulesson and 85 for the Sugarfield uh, batch number five. Both very, very good um, rums. Um, you will notice that none of these have been aged. Which I'm kind of okay with, uh, but but I mean the quality here does make me wonder how these would react with oak. Um, they don't even always react well. I've done a couple of other videos on this. Aging something doesn't necessarily always make it better. Um, but I still I'd love to see it. I'd love to try them. Um, all right, uh, to the uh, second sugar field. This is the Assumption Parish. Batch number six. This is the one that, that kind of wowed me on the first run through. So let's see if it's still wowing me. Again, kind of like the number five, it quiets down on the nose a little bit with water. Still has that insane strawberry red fruity thing mingled with 
olives and savory notes, the, the green notes, the Brussels sprouts. But, I mean, it's, it's kind of pulled back, much more muddy, much more like, like that red, no, red, red mud note um, from before. It's a good nose. It's not as, as loud as it was before, but uh, let's see how it does on the palate. Hmm. Okay, so points for originality. I, I think I actually like this better neat, but let me try it one more time. With water, this actually gets more like the first two. The Those um, red fruity notes are still there, but they kind of pull back into the background and some like just general cane juiciness comes out more. Um, I'm still enjoying the, the sort of way the, the ashiness and the muddiness of this, along with that, that funky bubble gummy thing, just coats my entire mouth and dominates my mouth. I, I enjoy being dominated like this. Um, but, I mean, hold on. Can I actually say that this is better than, than say, the Rue Laison? Let's find out. I'm gonna go back to the Rue Laison for a second. Yeah, I actually do. I do think this is, even with water, even with uh, it becoming a little bit more conventional, I do think this um, this assumption batch, this assumption parish batch, is that is that a little bit extra better? I'm gonna give this an 87 out of 100. Um, I really like this. I, I if I can, I may make a field trip to Louisiana just to buy this bottle. Um, it's really good. This is a uh, this is great stuff and, and interesting stuff. All right, moving on. I would love to see what actually what um what this would do with a decade in French oak or something. Uh, all right, and we are back to our final two. The Black Pearl from uh, 7.3. This, so uh, at this point in the, this was kind of the, the, the least of a, in a, in a weaker lineup, this would be winning, right? I mean, put this up against Bacardi, anything else, but against, you know, competition this strong, like this, this is getting kind of overshadowed, but let's go, let's give this a sh good, honest shot. Now this has some water in it. Still kind of doing the same things as, as it did before. Um, mainly whipped cream, you know, calm distilled rum kind of notes, even though I don't think this is actually calm distilled. Or at least not purely calm distilled. But flanked by some more interesting cane juicy sorts of, of notes that kind of are gesturing back towards the Roulesson, but just in a less, you know, less overt, more, more subtle, more, you know, throw, give me some, give me some lime and some, uh, um, uh, Cointreau kind of way, if you know what I mean. All right. On the palette. Not bad, not 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 good either, but certainly not bad. Yeah, throw the throw this into daiquiris all day long, it'll hold up. Um, you know, has a nice dry finish. Um, sweet whipped cream kind of characteristics. But you know, it just has the has the disadvantages of something that feels like it was it was distilled to higher strength, and is kind of built to be thrown into cocktails. Uh, I'm gonna give this, but I don't think it's again. I don't, I don't think it's bad. It's just that you know it gets, it's just not competing in this territory. You know, so I'm gonna give this a good honest 77 plus uh, points, and um, I haven't even checked the prices on these, but. If this is reasonably priced and you're looking for, you know, a 
rah-rah hometown Louisiana, New Orleans-based um, uh, rum for for your cocktail purposes. Um, actually, this would, this would be great in a, in a mojito. Yeah, well, this would actually be really good in a mojito. Um, this is a great one. Go for it. Um, all right. And we're going to finish up with the uh, Happy Raptor 504 Silver, which, again, just, just a reminder, does have the disadvantage of being bottled at lower strength than all these others, but it smells like and tastes like food, which is kind of fun. Okay, on the nose, with a little bit of water and a little extra time, some uh the 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 food notes are definitely still there this still smells foody but there's more of a kind of black twizzlers note it smells a little bit more candied so it's more i don't know how to put this um you know can, you know can, candied pizza um alongside black black twizzlers now but i'm enjoying that i appreciate that Very well made. Um, Happy Raptor, if you're listening, please release this to higher strength. Give it the 45, you know, 50% it deserves. And if not, you know, still strength. I will buy your still strength, but I will also buy your 40% or 45. Um, yeah, same, kind of the same thing going on, on as on the nose. Takes the initial, the, uh, the palate that was there before, uh, that very savory, foody, vegetal kind of, kind of thing tomato -y thing and you know kind of ring rolls that back a little bit puts in place some a kind of candy nature a little bit of a, of a black licorice thing but it's good I mean this is this is really solid I'm gonna give this 83 plus um, so it's not winning. I mean, you know, and again, in a weaker lineup, this would be the winner, right? This little 40% offering. Or put it put it another way. If I did a lineup of sort of American rums with better distribution, and this were in there against those, this would probably be, if not the winner, it would be like in the top three easily. Easily. And it's at 40%. Um... And that's the end of round one, my first flight with these. And I am uh, impressed, to say the least. These are terrific. These are really, really good. Uh, so what do we got? We got an 86 for the Rulaison. Um We've got, for the Sugar Fields, we've got an 85 followed by an 87. Uh, for the Black Pearl, the um, the offering from 7.3, I'm going to give that a 77 plus. Good mixer, but not really competing in this in this you know in this atmosphere. And the the Happy Raptor, the 504, um, you know, again needs some more strength. I would love to see this at 45, 43 would be great, would be fine too. I mean, whatever you got to do to make the, make the uh, make the budget work and keep the lights on. But this gets an 83 plus. Wow, I mean, I. So I was expecting at the end of this to have to say something like, um, yeah, well, uh, Louisiana uh, can have, has the great potential to become an amazing producer of rum, and we can see in all of these the, uh, uh, what, it, what it can aspire to if it were just to change a few things and maybe get some, some experience under its belt and so on, so on and so on and so on. I don't have to say that. These are already terrific. These are already terrific. Um, yeah, well done, well done, Louisiana. Thank you for watching this, and once again, I encourage you to uh, to donate to I mean any any uh, charity that you would like for for uh, idle recovery efforts. But I'm going to provide a link to the uh, Mutual Aid Response Network below. Um, you know, open open your hearts, uh, help some folks out. Hope you enjoyed watching this, and uh, I am delighted by the results, and. Uh, Cheers.